Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to give a quick run through on nuts and bolts and we'll outline the following. Number one will be how to identify them using uh, calipers, which is this fella, and a thread gauge. The difference between metric and imperial bolt uh, threads. The different thread types then for um, both metric and imperial. Quick look at the grades and strengths of different bolts. We'll look then at different types of nuts, different types of washers, and we'll cover a few other areas then which are sort of connected to it and which might be of interest. Now, when it comes to measuring bolts, there's two different measurements. There's a nominal diameter and an actual diameter. And what the nominal diameter is, is the classification of the bolt itself. For example, I've used uh, the biggest bolts I could find here. This is an M20 bolt uh, metric, which tells us that uh, it falls into the classification of a 20 millimeter bolt. Now, when we measure that, that will be slightly less because the nut that's required will be slightly over the 20 millimeter and the bolt itself will be slightly under the 20 millimeter. So we'll just measure that now in front of the camera. And what we're getting there is 19.79 which tells us then that it's uh, an M20 bolt. So that's the first measurement anyway. Now the second then is to identify the thread form on the bolt. And to do that, we use what are called thread gauges. These gauges work by fitting into the teeth and the, each individual key or um, gauge itself will have the number written on it, okay? And what you do with these is you'll offer these up to them until you get one that fits in perfectly. So we'll start off with a, a two, okay? Right, and don't know whether you can see that now, but the teeth don't fit in perfectly. We'll move up then to the 2.5 and stick that into it. And if I can get that in front of the camera there now, you can see that that just fits in perfectly there. So in the case of metric bolts, that 2.5 tells us that there's 2.5 millimeters between each thread form here on the bolt itself. When it comes to imperial bolts, uh, the, the methodology be slightly different, but I'll go through that in a minute. So thus far, we've identified this as an M20 bolt with 2.5 millimeters between each thread. Um, and then the third step will obviously be just to measure the length of it. And in this particular instance, we're looking at a 75 millimeter bolt. So we have a 75 mil M20 bolt with a 2.5 millimeter thread form on it. So that, that's how you identify metric bolts. Now, when it comes to imperial bolts, um, the measurement system will be roughly the same, but the classification will be different. So first thing we do is we'll change our calipers over to inches. We'll measure the bolt. And that's giving us 0.7395 or 0.74 um, inches, which is three quarters of an inch or puts it into the three quarter of an inch classification. Again, all bolts will measure slightly less than their nominal size. So a three quarter inch bolt won't measure exactly three quarters of an inch. So uh, we've identified what classification of a uh, bolt it is. The next thing we must do then is take out our thread gauge again and open them up. And what we'll try and do is find an appropriate thread gauge to fit in then. I'll stick a picture up there of um, the proper matching of a thread gauge to threads. So we'll start off here with a nine okay and whether you can see that now or you can see that that doesn't fit in uh, too well so we'll move up again and this is a, a process of trial and error so we'll start off with the, or move on to the 10 now and the 10 fits in there perfectly so that tells us that this is three quarters of an inch bolt with um 10 threads per inch and that's where the difference is between metric and imperial threads the metric will tell you the gap between the threads and then the imperial will tell you how many threads there are per inch okay and the third step then in this particular instance is we measure this and this is measuring as a three and a half inch bolt so we've established that this is a three and a half inch 
three quarter inch bolt with 10 threads per inch, okay? Now the two bolts that we've just measured there, uh, both the metric and the imperial one, have what are called a coarse thread profile, which means that there are fewer threads per, per length of bolt rather than a higher amount. As you go higher, um, the bolts then become a fine thread bolt or in some cases, a super fine thread bolt. Now, both metric and imperial standard bolts have a, a 60 degree um, angle between the crest of the thread and the root of the thread. And you can test this. This is a little uh, gauge called a fishtail gauge. And that sits in there and you can actually tell what angle the, the, the threads are at. So as I said, both metric and imperial standard bolts have a 60 degree thread form on them. Now, I'll stick up pictures there of, firstly, um, an M12 bolt, and there's three possible thread forms available for um, an M12 bolt. There's a uh, coarse, fine, and then super fine. And then the second picture I'll put up will be for a, a metric bolt, metric three quarter inch bolt, which shows the difference between um, a coarse and a fine thread. And in the Imperial bolts, the coarse threads are called UNC, which stands for United National Coarse, and the, or UNF, which is United National Fine. And the, the finer the thread, the more of them there are per inch. Now, those pictures I got from a website called theboltdepot.com, and there's a super downloadable PDF there with very clear information on both metric and Imperial bolts. They also cover nuts, washers, and a, a host of other information about fasteners. I'd highly recommend it. The link is in the description uh, just below us here. And I, I've even printed it out myself and I'll stick it up on the shelf of the workshop. Now, another great video, uh, probably better than this one, is from a channel called Tarka, uh, also well worth a look. And that covers fasteners and bolts as well. And again, I, I'll stick a link in the description down here. Now, in terms of measuring uh, nut sizes, the, the easiest way to do this is by uh, trial and error with bolts. It is possible to measure the, uh, the inside of a, a nut thread form with calipers and thread gauges, but you're more prone to error. So I'd say the easiest way to do it is um, when you're trying to match nuts and bolts, um, identify the bolt first and then identify the, the nut afterwards. Now, when it comes to um, inserting a, a bolt into a nut, there should not be undue pressure. It should, it should roll up there fairly easily without too much difficulty. If it starts to bind after a thread or two, then I would say that it's not the right one. Now, uh, if all else fails, the best thing you can do is uh, bring the bolt down to your hardware store and um, compare it to nuts and bolts down there and that'll identify it for you. Now, um, in terms of other thread types out there, there, as I said, the standard metric and imperial nuts and bolts have what are called a 60 degree thread, then in a variety of uh, fineness or coarseness, which we've gone through already. But just bear in mind that there is other threads there as well. Um, just to name a few, there's uh, Whitworth, Acme, Square Threads, and a few others. And I'll just stick up a, a picture there of different varieties. Now, where they differ from our normal bolts is the actual shape of the thread itself. Some of them be square, some of them be sort of oval or hollow. So just bear in mind that there is a, a, a number of different thread forms out there. Now, here in Ireland, uh, we were, though we're officially a metric country, we do come across imperial bolts and thread forms all the time, especially in plumbing, um, hydraulic fittings and uh, air supply in particular. Now, when it comes to bolt types, grades and finishings, there's a, a large variety there. As regards bolt types, they're generally classed by the type of head on them. Um, these are normal hex bolts, which require a socket um, to fasten and unfasten them. But there are many, many other types. For example, this one here is a countersink bolt. And what that has is an internal drive mechanism there, which takes a, a normal hex or a six-sided key to tighten and untighten. Um, 
the way they're finished in the hole is that a second operation is performed on the hole to widen it out and to allow these to sit flush into the hole. Uh, another type uh, that you'll come across quite frequently will be counterbore bolts where um, again the drive mechanism is internal requiring a, a hex key um, and the way these operate is that primarily the hole is drilled for the bolt and threaded and then a second hole is uh, a second wider hole is drilled to accept the, the head of the bolt to, to again to allow it to sit flush and where you'll come across these um, is where space is confined or a, a, a tidy finish or a flush finish is required now there are other types as well and i'll stick up a few pictures there the first one there is a, a button head uh, again that'll have an internal drive mechanism which and sometimes they can be a, a hex drive similar to these fellas they could be a torx or a, a basic uh, screw type um, so the button heads again and um, they're sort of a, a lower profile than nor the normal hex head bolts and then the second type there they're going to put up is a, a dome type or a, a, sometimes they're called carriage bolts and what they have is a square shank or, or square section under the head which fits into a, a square hole and allows it recess into the material you'll also find them used a lot with um, with wood as well whereby a, a hole is bored in the wood and then the carriage bolt is put in and the square section uh, bites into the wood and stops the bolt turning and is fastened then or tightened by use of the nut. Now, as regards the grades of bolts, there are different qualities of bolts. Um, uh, from an imperial perspective, what you'll find is uh, similar to this. Right, and I'll hold it up there and what you'll see there is three little lines on the back of the bolt sometimes there's other writing as well but generally speaking that's manufacturers trademarks or uh, manufacturers identification but with the imperial bolts um, if there's no lines on it generally it's classed as a low carbon bolt and um, a grade five which is this one here is classed as a uh, or sorry, um, it's classed as a grade five bolt because there's three lines on it. And then there's grade eights, which are um, the same lines, but there's six of them uh, around the head of the bolt. Now, um, generally speaking, we'll say the higher the grade of bolt, the more carbon is in it and uh, the harder the bolt is. But there is a trade off between hardness and brittleness. So um, when you're using the, the high carbon bolts, Generally speaking, there's a, a deterioration in vibration, absorption, and other material handling properties like that. So that's the imperial side where you'll see the lines. And then uh, with the metric bolts, what you'll have is, and I'll try and hold it there, uh, you'll see a number written on the bolt or the head of the bolt. Um, these can be, generally speaking, the most common ones you'll find will be 8.8. .8. There are 10.9s and 12.9s. But again, the higher you go, the more brittle the bolt becomes, but the harder it becomes. So there's a, there is a trade-off there as regards um, hardness versus strength or shear capabilities. Now, in terms of bolt finishings uh, or, or the coverings for the bolts, the most common type you'll find are zinc plated, uh, which have a sort of a shiny bright finish. There are also slightly yellowish looking bolts, and these are, I think, a chromate finished um covering which offers a slightly better corrosion resistance you'll come across black bolts as well and they're just oxide covered and they offer minimal corrosion resistance for for the the, the highest performance as regards corrosion resistance uh, there are hot dipped galvanized nuts and bolts and they have a thicker covering on them and can only be used together with other galvanized fasteners and the reason for that is because the coating is thicker there's different tolerance tolerances uh, between the nut and the bolt and you can't interchange a zinc plated uh, nut on a, a hot dipped galvanized bolt so the galvanized variety they you'll you'll recognize them by the fact that they have a sort of a dull matte finish to them whereas the zinc plated ones or the chromate covered ones are much shinier you'll also come across uh, stainless steel nuts and bolts and um, they're commonly found in areas where there's a high uh, level of corrosion resistance required Sometimes you'll see them on exterior furniture and fittings and uh, certainly in marine use anyway where you'd have boats. Now they are more expensive and they are slightly more brittle and I don't think that they have the same mechanical properties as a normal um, 
low carbon or a, a lower carbon type bolt. Now, as regards uh, nuts and washers, again, they come in a huge variety of types. In terms of nuts, the most common ones you'll come across are a, a standard hex nut, um, which means that there's six sides to the nut. Um, you'll, you'll also find, uh, commonly enough, what are called nylock nuts. And what these have is a little ring of nylon inserted in the top of the nut, and that grips onto the bolt and provides greater um, loosening resistance or resistance to loosening. Uh, another type you'll find where something needs to be opened and closed quite frequently will be a hand-driven wing nut. And I'll also stick up a picture there of uh, a cap or a dome-type nut where a tidy appearance is required. And generally speaking, um, they're tightened in with the, the bolt and the finish then is quite flush. Uh, you'll also come across flange nuts. Uh, I mean, effectively what they have is a nut and a washer combined. Uh, castle nuts, again, I'll stick a picture up there. And the castle nuts are used where high torque is not needed or a high tightening um, property. You'll find them commonly used where uh, bearings are present and uh, they're tightened up and then slightly backed off and then they're prevented from loosening with a, a cotter pin which runs through the back of the nut. Now with washers uh, they were originally used to spread the load for tightening purposes. Over time then this evolved into specialist washers to prevent loosening of the nut such as a spring washer, a tooth lock and I'll stick up a picture there of a spring washer, a tooth lock washer and uh, a brand called Nordlock washers as well. Um, they're all used to prevent loosening of the nut and the bolt. Now, there is also a, another methodology whereby there's liquid adhesives specially designed for uh, preventing bolts uh, becoming loose. D these, this is particularly uh, prevalent where you'll have a, a high temperature variant range where metal uh, expands and contracts with uh, heat and also areas where there's particularly high vibration. This, this adhesive is called Threadlocker, uh, this brand is called Loctite and it comes in many many varieties and if you look at the Loctite website it will give you uh, operational parameters for all the different types of Loctite that they have. Now just to close up, um, all about nuts and bolts, uh, I have just some miscellaneous information there. Um, when it comes to actually making a thread in a hole or cleaning up a thread or repairing a thread, what we use are called taps and dies. And this set here now is quite a large set. This is a tap. And effectively what happens is a, a particular size hole is drilled. And then this is turned into the hole. And what it does is it cuts a thread. And that's what creates the thread in a hole. And um, just for example's sake, this here is a little set of um, M8, M10 and M12. And in here is everything that's required to, to make a threaded hole. First off, um, I have three drill bits. The drill bit uh, for the M8 hole is actually 6.8 millimeters. So the first thing that happens is uh, a hole is drilled with the 6.8 millimeter drill bit. The second um, operation then is you'll cut a thread in with this taper uh, thread cutting uh, um, attachment which has a tapered edge which finds its way into the hole much easier and then the third uh, element in that then is that once that thread is made you can finish the thread down to the bottom of the hole with a flat ended tap it's called or they're, they're called taps so that's how threads are actually made on um, internally from an external uh, thread or to make an external thread what are used are called dies and these are dies and again the round stock is turned down or made to a particular size and then this um, this die here is screwed onto it and as the die is screwed on it cuts a new thread in which then uh, uh, matches the, the thread that you're trying to make and just for example sake there now this one is an M16 uh, die, okay? Just to let you know that. Now, when it comes to identifying 
threads and the holes that you need for threads there's two books which are very um, advantageous the first one is called the Zeus precision handbook and you get this for anywhere between eight to ten euros or ten to twelve dollars in, in any hardware store and what that'll have is data charts on what are needed like this for example's sake this top section here uh, gives us the ISO metric fine threads in millimeters another example would be this little book here it's called the engineer's black book and um, you can get this in both metric and inch editions and I think I, I noticed it there on the website the other day that the, the most modern version has a pair of overalls on the, the Vitruvian man at the front but again this will give you a wealth of information on all thread cutting taps clearance holes etc etc just as a, a by the by now uh, one thing that I found particularly uh, useful um, is this fella here uh, I, I got this specifically for measuring the threads on grease nipples or grease circs as they're called in the states and it has a metric section a unf section which is united national fine and um, bsw which is uh, whitworth treads bsf which is fine and then bspt which is uh, some type of pipe thread but what it does is um it has threads cut into it or tapped into it and then you can test each individual fitting into this and see which one is correct or identify them that way now that's basically the end of a, an introduction to nuts and bolts and the main aims of this video is to demonstrate that there's quite a bit of background uh, behind uh, nuts and bolts and threads but nothing that should deter you from identifying and replacing your own or at least being comfortable with what you're doing now a, a small recommendation that if you do carry a stock of nuts bolts and washers label them well and keep them separated from each other um, I'll stick up two pictures there. I recently sorted mine into the various sizes and gave them a box each with the diameter and thread labelled onto each box. All, all of the nuts and bolts I carry are coarse thread and generally you'll find that the coarse threads are the most commonly found ones. Now, I hope this video has been some way helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, stick them in the link down below or stick them in the comments down below there and I'll, I'll try and answer them.